It's Monday. It's Mark. It's miniatures. Mini miniatures. Mini, mini miniatures. It's Mark's Miniature Monday. And we've got some exciting stuff today. (laughs) I've got some very exciting stuff. This is a pleasure to work on. So, Warlord Games, who you might have heard of, they're a small Nottingham-based upstart, they have recently started to release some new epic figures, the Mm. Epic Napoleonics, based around Waterloo. Mm -hmm. Um, And we got hold of some. We the did. heavy cavalry frames, which also have artillery on. Yeah. We gave them to you, and you've painted some. They gave them to me and said, paint these. Yep, that was yeah. it. That was it. So I Mark's eyes like, are ruined. A few, few, few <laughs> books thrown at me as well. Use these. Yep. Yeah. Um, and they're very small, so we're hoping that they come through on the video okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, you've been painting them. So over to Mark to talk about them. Mm, okay. So I painted up two different types of cavalry, one British, one French, but the, uh, the both the Dragoons. And uh, for the British, I painted up the uh, the first uh, Royal Dragoons, and for the uh, French, uh, I painted the second uh, regiment of Dragoons. Uh, so let's start with the British. British, okay. Okay. So you've done two different standards of two British. Two different, yeah. So I went for a uh, two different distinct approaches. One a more advanced, and and another being a, an intermediate approach. Really, yeah. the advanced uh, techniques which I used, you probably don't need to do this. Um, I just fancied it. Wanted to see how, how much I could push my eyes and my brush. Yes. And I enjoy challenge, let's put it that way. Yeah, because these uh, are these are teeny tiny figures. They're not the teeniest of tiny, but they are mm. they're not even fifteen, they're thirteen point five mil. Th- is that so, what they are? Thirteen point yeah. five. Wow, okay. So but it's things like I've painted the eyes on the horse. You really don't need to do that. No. Um, and I think I even attempted to paint the eyes on one of the uh, cavalrymen as well. Before you went, this is just a fool's errand. Don't, yeah. yeah. It, <laughs> don't, don't do that. It's absolutely pointless. Um, a, a quick shade in, in where the, the eye sockets is enough. Yeah. It's all you need. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's you've kind of gone against conventional wisdom for once you get down to the scale, which is mm. paint the units rather than the individuals, whereas you did paint these individuals, but that mm. was... Partly because you were doing it for a guy, uh, but talk a bit about what challenges you faced with these. So the biggest challenge, first of all, was researching and ensuring that the uniform colours were. Well, well I'm, I'm a bit of a perfectionist, and I need to ensure that everything is is spot on. Yeah. And so that was the first hurdle, making sure that everything looked as it should do, even down to the the uh, the, the, the colours of the, uh, the 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 host's coat. I, I need to make sure that. You know, this is a horse which the cavalry would have, would have yeah. gone to battle on. I didn't want to paint it grey or white and then discover at a later point that actually... It's not that colour. It wouldn't, it wouldn't have uh, ridden on that. But so even, uh, even with your methodical, thorough research, the scale forced you to make concessions, right? Because yeah, you in places couldn't put as many stripes as would be in place yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. You just you have to hold back on that. You have to hold back on it. Yeah. And on the... Uh, so I'll show you in a moment. On the more basic uh, cavalry which I've done. So on these ones, hopefully this will... Uh, you can see this here. Yeah. You can see how I've done a double stripe there, and there's some slight detail here on the back. Um, on the more basic, you've, I've not done that. It's simply yeah. just a, a one yellow line, just to represent the fact that the colour would be there. And from a distance, it's you're not going to be able to tell the difference yeah. between those. So I've, I've tried to keep it just that li- like level down of what you actually would paint typically on a miniature. Yes. But I mean, you've painted these more detailed than many would paint a 28 millimeter Napoleonic. To be <laughs> fairly honest. So, um, but the interesting thing is, as well, at this scale, you kind of your highlights seem much starker as well, right? So there's there's more pop to your figures. Yeah. So they probably appear a bit lighter than than again. If I was being critical of myself, uh, the the highlights I've put on there probably detract and desaturate the colours probably a little bit too much. And you know, you you could you could you know. Go without, and then on the, and the well, actually on the more basic approach which I've gone, they do stand out a bit more a because bit brighter, because yeah. they don't have that extra highlight level, and so that's a lesson. So that's a, that's a lesson which you should take from this. Don't go to having the highlights on such a small scale. Sure. Um, keep it keep it basic. They'll stand out more on the battlefield. Um, but you know, sometimes it's quite fun to just push yourself yeah, and go. Sure. Can I apply a highlight to this to this cuff, which is <laughs> one point five millimeters? Yeah, you got out your scientific microscope to work it. Human eyeballs, all it was used on these. Mine would not do. Yeah. That. Mine are too broken. <laughs> so, uh, so that you know, a few tips: don't yeah. get too heavy with the highlights. I enjoyed doing that. I enjoy pushing myself. Just not needed. Yeah. Keep it, keep it a bit simpler. So I'll, I'll bring up the. the the more intermediate yeah. uh, ones that we did, and you, you can see how they do just 
um, the, the colours there just just pop more immediately. Yeah. And do you know what? I'm prob I probably prefer this one. Not only are they quicker, they stand out more. Um, you can batch paint these. Uh, there's a French tutorial, which is that going to be available online? Yeah, that one's going to yeah. go online. So the British tutorial is in the magazine, and then the French tutorial will be available online yeah. for everyone. So. And for the French one, I'm going to talk about how I actually airbrush the horses. So that again saves you time, and when you're yeah. painting, if you're painting 50 horse, uh, 50 cavalry, get your airbrush out if you have one. Paint yeah. them all up, and then all you have to do is just apply a little bit of paint to the actual cavalrymen, and you're saving yourself a hell of a lot of time there. Sure. Yeah, excellent. So, um, so that's the British. Yeah, so that's the British. And obviously, you've got those other options to make as well from the frame. Mm. And there's an artillery piece included on the frame too. There is so an artillery piece. Yeah. That's really cool. We'll whip out the British artillery. Yeah. We'll whip out the British gun. Yeah. There we go. So. Um, Really enjoy these miniatures. Although often, when you when you're painting the uh, the, the gun on its own, and you, you, I painted the wheels individually and the cannon, then glue them together. Yeah. Um, it almost looks like the uh, the artillerymen are just showing someone off a wheel. Yes, yeah, it's quite very, amusing. They're very big fans of this wheel. <laughs> yeah. They're uh, they're all stroking, stroking it. it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, it's like one's got a match, a giant match, and it's showing his <laughs> wheel. Um, but they are really great little miniatures. Yeah, they and, are. And, and, and on a board, you can imagine them all arrayed, your, your artillery battery, and, and how interesting that will look. Um, but these were, again, really straight, straightforward to paint, yeah. ultimately. Um, so it started with the actual uh, the, the, the mount, quickly kind of then just to wash on there, nice and straightforward. Um, and again, the, the challenge with these was actually finding um, reference material to accurately paint up the yeah. individuals. It's almost like sometimes you'll struggle to find a single reference image, but with Napoleonics, you, you find so many reference find images so many, it's that it's finding, just overwhelming. Yeah, so. it's finding the exact one that you need, which yeah. represents the particular headpiece that they're wearing. Yes. Um, I know the Warlord uh, crew have mm. painted all the different models from the range as well, oh, so that will be there for reference. Yeah. Um, and this isn't it from them, it's a massive range that mm. they've got coming out. like with. They previously did the American War, uh, the Civil War. Civil War, yeah. And that was basically just one frame. So for this, you've got individual frames for lots of different uh, groups. There's British heavy cavalry, there's French heavy cavalry. Do we have British riflemen? This is a big question. Yeah, there's infantry oh, frames. I think there's yeah. about 11 or 12 frames altogether. So you've got okay. a frame for the French light cavalry, yeah, yeah. frame for the British light cavalry, you've got mm. British skirmishers, you've got French skirmishers. Yeah. There's character models in there, there's extra artillery. Tons of stuff. Okay, um, so you'd be able to replicate a, a good size well, bottle of Waterloo if you. The, if you the goal is Waterloo yeah. Yeah. in plastic. They're that, even yeah. doing iconic terrain pieces from the battle as well that are being done yeah. by Sarissa. So Wonderful. it's a pretty exciting range. I'm quite likely going to get involved in this. Yeah, yeah. we'll uh, we'll maybe do some more ahead with uh, some of the infantry as well. Brilliant, excellent. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Hey, so uh, so there's the uh, the British artillery piece. The um, Royal Horse Artillery. There we go. And then we're on to the French. So yeah, with the French well, again, we'll start with the cavalry first. And uh, as mentioned, these are the um, Second uh, Regiment Dragoons. And really enjoyed painting these. Um, I secretly enjoyed painting them more so than the British. Well, it's not uh, a secret anymore. And it's, no, it's I'm open. I openly collect a lot of French armies. I'm not quite sure why. It's uh, French cool. What's <laughs> wrong with the French? French are cool. Um, and yeah, really enjoyed painting these. Uh, the colours just they were quite straightforward to paint on there. Greens, reds, and they just really pop on off the horse. I, I was really happy with that. Um, again, the challenge was discovering not only. Um, that these are dragoons, but also which regiments of dragoons fought at the Battle of Waterloo yeah. uh, for the French. So uh, once I located that, then it was about establishing which particular colours to go with. Yeah. So I think it's. It, I mean, it's worth saying. Like, that yeah. I think these are going to bring some new people to the Napoleonics. Mm. Don't be scared. Like, unless you're playing against opponents who you probably don't want to be playing against anyway. If someone's getting too fussed about you've not got the right facings or whatever, yeah. they're not someone you want to be spending a lot of time with. It's Yes, historically accurate is mm. important, but if you put in the effort mm. and try and get it close, it's no problem. So long as your British infantry have got red coats, French got blue, you know, that's the kind of thing that yeah, you need to like speak. And getting, I mean, the, the cavalry didn't have flags, but if you're getting your flags right and yeah. things like that, then you're doing, you're doing fine, yeah. you know, and you can get printouts of that stuff, yeah. so you'll be okay. I think the important thing is so that your opponent can identify what they're facing. Yes, that, That's the sure. key thing, isn't it? Um, so yeah, these really enjoyable to paint. Uh, kind of batch paint them, so I painted five at the same time. 
and uh, like I mentioned, used an airbrush to paint the horses initially, then obviously came to using a bristle brush, bristle brush to do the details such as the uh, the reins and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, quite, I wanted to make sure that these were quick and detailed. Again, went to a bit more detail than I probably would do if I was painting them for an army. Um, it's slightly higher on the highlights. But if you are wanting to do some highlights, the horses and yeah. their heads, that's where I'd go for it. Uh, yeah, like just, key areas of detail, right? Rather yeah, than around the ears, the across figure. the mane, um, a little bit of detail on the on the helmet top. Um, so, so those parts, maybe the hoof, the leading foot, yeah. that sort of thing, uh, and then just a little bit on the on the uh, tail yeah. of the horse as well. So keep it nice and straightforward. The uniforms of the, uh, the of the coverman, you don't really need to worry about. It's it's more than just the the little bits at the top which, sure. which pop and catch the eye. Well, yeah, you're going to yeah. see this army from above. So yeah. as long as they look good from above, you're laughing. Exactly. That's the key. Yeah. Don't don't worry about the the actual from the sides or it's it's, it's above which is key. Yeah. So here we have the uh, the French artillery piece, and as you can see, it's very similar to the British. It's a, it's, a, it's again it's a horse artillery and uh, even a very similar uniform scheme to be fair but with, with red accents there as opposed to uh, yellow and red yeah. on, the, on the British one and uh, yeah again same process you paint the actual cannon and first with the wheels and individuals and then you glue glue them together once it's all painted keep yeah. it nice and straightforward and I mean if you're doing it much faster than Mark and you're mm. doing a big bulk of stuff you can also paint quite a lot of these on the frame yeah, uh, yeah without... frame painting is a, is a big yeah, yeah. so yeah. just you can even just primer through to the final finish and then mm. just touch up those bits where you clip them off yeah. with a brush at the end. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, good good tip. Excellent. Okay, so there we have the uh, the, the array of uh, miniatures which we've painted for the Napoleonic range. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. This video has been brought to you by WI Prime, War Games Illustrated Magazine's online members club. View more videos or find out more about WI Prime by following these links.